welcome to Madison Square Garden. The others have been terrific, but this is the main event. Gonzaga and St. Joseph's, the nightcap and finale of the Coaches vs. Cancer Classic. Dan Schulman, Big Vitale, and Doris Burke will have the call for us. Let's go down to Dan Schulman now. Dan? All right, Reese, thank you very much. I tell you, the guy to my right is pretty pumped up <laughs> about this matchup. And yes, you're right. This is the feature game of this tournament. And about four or five years ago, if you said, if you gave the eight programs and said Gonzaga and St. Joseph's will be the feature game, people would think you're crazy. But these two programs have elevated themselves to be considered among the very best in the country. Well, I'll tell you, Dan, how good they are. I really believe both these clubs can make a serious run come the postseason for a final four, four berth if they stay healthy. And that is the key, staying healthy. When you look, for example, at St. Joe's, you look at that backcourt, Jameer Nelson, pound for pound, inch for inch. He may be like Sugar Ray Leonard was when he fought. The best in America. And then you talk about Delante West, and he can score big time. On the other side, you got Blake Stepp. Romy Turioff on the inside is a pro prospect. He told me tonight, I am going to play. I'm ready to play. He only practiced one day. Coming back from a stress fracture in his right foot. We didn't know until a little while ago when Doris Burke told us that Turioff was going to play, that he indeed was going to suit up in tonight's game. Our star watch, a couple of point guards and two of the best in the country. The West Coast Conference Player of the Year last year, Blake Stepp. He's a senior now, and Jameer Nelson, also a senior, thought about going to the NBA, came back to St. Joseph's. He should become the all-time leader in assists for St. Joseph's within the next few weeks. Dick mentioned Roni Turioff, one of the outstanding big men for Gonzaga, is going to play tonight. Just back from an injury, just practiced for the first time yesterday. With more on Turioff, here is Doris Burke. Thanks, Dan. It was a fracture in his right foot, the fourth metatarsal. Gonzaga actually went up to West Point to practice. Ronnie Brody was full go yesterday. He feels good. He warmed up before the game. Mark Few told us, listen, we're going to warm him up. If he feels good, we will play him. Now, he had some monster games last year, guys. We're looking for more consistency this season. All right, Doris, thank you. You can hear the noise behind us. This is the noises this building has been over the last couple of days, and that's because the fans from St. Joseph's bought more than 4,000 tickets. More than 4,000 people have come north from Philadelphia up here to New York, inhabiting every nook and cranny and rafter of this building, Madison Square Garden. And there is a big-time, home-time crowd. Wow. Home court advantage for the Hawks here tonight. I'll tell you, a Hawk Hill man jumps and had so much history down there in basketball over the years. Dr. Jack Ramsey, Jimmy Lynham. Let's check out the lineups for tonight's game, beginning with St. Joseph's. Again, Jameer Nelson and Delonte West, as Dick mentioned, just maybe the best backcourt in America. Pat Carroll, Matt's little brother, can shoot it like Matt can, but Pat's a lefty. John Bryan and Dwayne Jones are very important. St. Joseph's need as much as they can get inside so that they don't become too perimeter-oriented. For Gonzaga, this is a scary thought. Mark Few says if everybody's healthy, this is the best team that he's had as the head coach of the Zags. Wooden Award nominees are the Blake Stepp and Corey Violet. Maybe the best pro prospect, as we mentioned, is Roni Turioff, and he's going to come off the bench. A transfer from the University of Washington, Earl Knight, is, despite a, a tender ankle, is going to see some minutes tonight. This is a deep, talented, big, experienced team that looks poised for a big-time run. How about this, Dick? I think that's great. I tell you, the enthusiasm, the energy, you can feel it. It's almost a tournament environment here tonight. This is the Garden Rocket. It's a shame, and I say shame on you, to the St. John's fans who didn't make it happen like that last night against Marquette. Did not come out to support their kids. But tonight, Hawk Hill, man, that is St. Joe's presence. And the Gonzaga Zags, they love their Zags in Spokane. The kennel rocks and rolls. And last year, the winning streak of 29 came to an end with Jameer Nelson, 34 points, scored at the end of the game to win it for, yes siree, Bill the, Martelli and St. In the Jones. last five years for the Zags, five tournament berths, one Elite Eight, two Sweet Sixteens, and none of that includes last year, the Elite Eight of the Sweet Sixteens, when they almost beat Arizona in the second round, one of the best games that we saw all season long for St. Joseph's. 23 wins last year. They led the nation in field goal percentage, defensive field goal percentage, even though they're not that big of a team, but a great backcourt offensively and defensively and a great home court advantage 
thousands of St. Joseph's fans are here at MSG tonight. And for more on that, back to Doris. St. Joseph's University setting a coaches versus cancer ticket sales record. 4,200 tickets sold by St. Joseph's, surpassing both Duke and UConn. I just talked to Don DeGiulia, the AD at St. Joseph's. He said, honestly, I believe we've got more like 6,000 some of our fans choosing to come up and purchase tickets here today. Bill Martelli, the immensely popular head coach at St. Joe's. He's got his own television show, which is really upbeat, which we'll tell you about a little bit later. He's had feelers to go to other jobs, so-called bigger jobs, but he's a Philly guy. He wants to stay where he is. They let him be who he wants to be. Mark Few, you know, gets tempted as well, but he has built a national powerhouse at Gonzaga. St. Joe's and White, Gonzaga in blue. Jameer Nelson for three. Brian Skies to keep it alive, and the Hawks get a second opportunity. I think really a key player for St. Joe's will be Jones on the interior. He's an improved player, according to everybody. Last year, blocked shots and rebounded. Played about 19 minutes a game. Again, these teams very familiar with one another, having played nail biters each of the last two years. Another miss for Nelson. And now the Zags get their first opportunity. Step kicks it out. Corner jumper from Step off the side of the backboard. A little nervousness right there. And now an offensive foul called on Corey Violet. A little over-exuberant establishing his position down in the paint. You know, you talk about the record. St. Joe's the last three years. 26 and 7, 19 and 12, 23 and 7, 68 and 26. You talk about Mark View, his fifth season at Gonzaga as the head coach. He's won at least 24 or more each season. 105 and 29 against good competition. Big guy Jones comes out high to help in the offense. Now to Delonte West. This guy can be a big time scorer, but he misses a three. He averaged 27 a game over a six game period prior to having a stress fracture in his foot. Played limited minutes against Auburn yep. when they lost a tough overtime game to Auburn. Otherwise, St. Joe's might have had a really big season last year had West not gotten hurt. And now Gonzaga trying to establish its superior size inside. Mark Few, the head coach of the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And what a job he's done taking over several years back from Dan Munson. He doesn't like the term Cinderella. He doesn't like the term mid-major. And you know what? You can't blame him because this team, as we mentioned, is now a national program. They get great players from the Northwest. They get transfers from Pac-10 schools. And again, he thinks this could be the best team he's had. They're signing some outstanding players. Signing the likes of, we'll see him tonight, Morrison, as they missed the free throw. Also, the one thing about Mark Few and also about Phil Martelli, they're so liked by the kids. They're just genuine people. Yep. They're classy guys away from blowing a whistle. Down to earth, guys. Richard Fox at the line for the Zags. They have depth and size. They can rotate on the inside. Little 2-2-1 two -two press. They'll rotate back in the man-to-man. Now there's Sony. Got to match up. by Skinner to knock it out of bounds. Got to match up by Nelson. On the floor for Gonzaga, Blake Stepp, Tony Skinner, Richard Fox, Corey Violet, and Adam Morrison, a true freshman out of Spokane, getting a start in his collegiate debut. He wears number three. The lefty West knocks it down. A deep three for the Hawks. You're not going to let West get a look like that. He'll knock that down all night. A big-time scorer. Really, he blends so perfectly with the ability of Nelson. The overwhelming favorites in the Atlantic 10 against the overwhelming favorites in the West Coast Conference here tonight. Fox, no. Rebound for Skinner, but he can't finish. You can feel the up-tempo. Yep. A lot more excitement out here. The quicker, the better for St. Joe's, would you say? Well, yeah, they like to play at that fast pace, but so does the Zags. The Zags are not going to back down or slow it down. And the Zags probably deeper than St. Joe's. Yeah, much deeper. Skinner inside, and there's Violet to tie the game. Nice entry. Violet does a great job posting on the interior. I mean, you talk about Violet, Drury off, and Fox. They got some size yep. and knows how to play. Three big bodies to split two positions down in the interior. One of the great games last year was that loss to Arizona. Jones, no, and the rebound for Violet. Maybe not too many second opportunities for the Hawks. Step, spins by Nelson. Floater, no. And here come the Hawks, two on two. Nelson with West. 
Wide open three for West. And another good block out by the Zags. Those big guys, Fox and Violet. They know how to utilize their body. They yeah. really seal off. They block out exceptionally well. A guy out on the West Coast Conference has dominated the league. Skinner short on the three. On the go again is Jameer Nelson. This time he'll pull up for a two. And the outside shot's not falling right now for the guards of the Hawks. I think there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of nervousness, feeling out one another. Just like two boxers when they start a boxing match in a championship fight. St. Joe's one for seven from the floor. We're tied at three, three and a half minutes in, despite a very good pace to the start of this game. Fox switches to the left hand, follows up his own miss, and taps home the third try. I tell you, he's big and strong on the inside. He and Violet take a lot of space up with their bodies. They're space eaters on the inside. 6'11", 265 is Fox, and Violet listed as the exact same height and weight. What a nice matchup. You got Steph going head-to-head -head with Nelson now as they rotate out of the zone. Mark Hughes club into the man-to-man. -man. See, watch him on the inside. He's very unique on the interior. He's got all kinds of up and on moves. Hangs with it. And there's the little tip. Three subs coming in for the Zags. We mentioned they're deep. Three subs, four minutes in, including Roni Turioff coming into the game. The outstanding junior forward originally from Martinique, but only started playing basketball five years ago. Has played to the National Institute in France, and he's getting his first action now after just practicing yesterday, coming back from a stress fracture. Now a steal by Nelson after the bucket, and a quick four-point turnaround for the Hawks. I tell you, he can put points on the board quickly. He's very explosive. Did an excellent job prior to that with the penetration and the feed for the layup. Now Blake Stepp trying to calm things down a little bit. There's a kick ball. That'll reset the shot clock and take us to our first timeout. What a great start to this game in front of a huge St. Joseph's crowd, which loved it, those last couple of baskets by the Hawks. There goes Nelson. Look at Nelson. Great anticipation. Then he backs away, squares his body. Nothing but Nylon, the All-American. I'm telling you, he will be a candidate for National Player of the Year. With ESPN Full Court, you'll get more than 450 additional games of college basketball. Order now. The volcano is a sleeping giant. Any time it can stir. Even when it's quiet, a volcano has a lot to say about our planet. My job is to listen to the volcano. TIAA Craft manages money for Dr. Harold or Secretson. Volcanoes, that's what I think about. TIAA Craft, managing money for people with other things to think about. If these walls could talk, they'd say use the new straight line stud finder. The sensor activates on contact, so you just locate, mark, and there's your stud. Stud finder, part of the straight line laser tool family. Helis ignition and laser assisted cruise control. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Or is everyone else standing still? The FX from Infinity. Experience a new version of the Two Towers on DVD with over 40 minutes of new and extended scenes and two additional DVDs devoted to hours of never-before-seen bonus material. It's the must-own DVD of the year, the Two Towers Special Extended Edition, owned at November 18th. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball, brought to you by the Straight Line Laser Tool Family. Oh. Welcome back here to Madison Square Garden. Great start to this game between St. Joseph's and Gonzaga. A 7-5 lead for the Hawks of St. Joe's. Four and a half minutes into the game. The very highly thought of and a very popular head coach of the St. Joseph's Hawks, Phil Martelli. And alongside every great coach, Dick, as you know well, is a very strong support system, including his wife, Judy. And for more on that, here's Doris. Thanks, Dan, and it's in us tonight, Judy. And she can lay claim to the kind of basketball success that Phil Martelli aspires to. A great player at Immaculata College, she won three national titles during her intercollegiate basketball days. She played for a great coach out there, Doris. Kathy Rush, who did a great job with Immaculata. His mom and dad here, his dad, 
mom 50 years married. Wow. Skinner short on the three for the Zags. Good rebound in traffic by Dwayne Jones of St. Joe's. This is Tyrone Barley into the game now for the Hawks. A great defender, number 12. He's the leader of the defense for St. Joseph. One of the reasons why they had the best defensive field goal percentage in all of America last year. And Gonzaga, despite some open, open looks here tonight, not shooting the ball well early. I'll tell you, Barley is a terrific defender. He may be the best perimeter defensive player in the Atlantic 10. As you watch Nelson with that little fadeaway, he's got that great touch. You can just see it. It goes up very soft. They love him in Chester, PA. Barley pressuring Steph. Steph flies all the way to the basket. Get him go down, but the follow is good to bring the Zags back within two. Give the bucket to Earl Knight, the transfer from the University of Washington, and Blake Step is hurt, as you can see him limping and cringing on his way back down the floor. Baseline jumper for Jones is good, I and the Hawks are back up by four. Jones is going to be a valuable player for them. You know, we saw last night Travis Diener, same situation, and getting it out, and I think we'll see that out of Step. Violet on the drive. Wild shot off the glass. Won't go. Nelson with a look ahead, and Barley is bumped by Knight, but there's no call, and the St. Joe's fans don't like it one bit. And they have a right to. That was really a poor play right there in terms of should have blown that whistle. Hey, what about the follow there by Roni Turioff? Roni Turioff, and you talk about Violet and Fox. Give them a big edge on the inside. Great acrobatic play by Knight preceding that, and it was Turioff following Knight's miss. Knight gives him a kind of an athlete at Gonzaga they haven't had in the past. West with a miss, Steph with a rebound. Going for the home run, and it's picked off by Nelson. Great anticipation by Nelson. Look at a little shake of me. Are you serious? Oh. Everything but the finish for Jameer Nelson had the St. Joe's fans on their feet. Alone underneath the basket is Knight, but he's blocked by Bryant. Knight rotates over. He got the starting role. He won the starting role, according to Phil Martelli. Now oh, yeah. the three. He is super, my friends. That kid is the 3S man. Super Cincinnati sensational. Jameer Nelson. If you don't believe it, ask the people at Dayton when he scored 39 and then 34. He scored in the game against Gonzaga last year. 33 with Xavier. Another block, this time by Dwayne Jones, who led the A-10 in blocks last year, despite playing only 21 minutes a game. That's an amazing number when you think about it. His minutes are going to increase this year, Dan. Step gets through, and there's another one by Dwayne Jones. Dwayne Jones sends a message. Thou shalt not enter thy lane. That's the first commandment defensively from Mr. Jones, also from Chester, PA. He says it's Rejection City, man. I'm the human eraser. Look at this little shake and bake. Look at the little shake and bake. The change of direction. I thought he was going to put it through Violet's legs for a second on the drive. Great performances by Nelson at the offensive end and Jones at the defensive end for the Hawks. That's why they've got an early five-point lead. This is Derek Ravio, true freshman, number five for Gonzaga. Again, their team, for Mark Few, is going to go to his bench. That's Kyle Bank at a good outside shooter, number 20, who's also come into the game as Steph spins into the double team but draws the foul. Well, Sunday, four of the top nine women's college basketball teams in the nation meet in the State Farm Tip-Off Classic right here on ESPN2. At 2.30, number three, Texas, against Atlanta Beard and number two, Duke. And then at 5 o'clock, number five, Kansas State, against number nine, Purdue. Nicole Oldie needs seven points to become Kansas State's all-time leading scorer. Well, you know, you look at Blake Staff. He's certainly a, a guy, MVP last year in the West Coast Conference, two-time conference uh, all tournament, all all-conference player, a member of the 2003 USA Pan American team. A kid that knows how to score, played for his dad, got good touch. Now, Step makes some free throws, and he's going to sit down as Adam Morrison, the freshman, comes back in. Step injured earlier, played through it for a few minutes, and here's Morrison, who is coming back from a sprained left wrist. He is a righty, and he scored 29 points in an exhibition game, but he just let West blow by him, but because he's 6'7", he recovered to block the shot. Ravio with the ball was heavily recruited. Ravio is a guy that's going to really give him some good perimeter minutes. They're impressed, certainly, with Morrison and Ravio. Their recruiting yep. has really increased. 
Here's Ravio. He played well in the preseason as well. I like that name, Ravio, man. Looks a little <laughs> ravioli. <laughs> Morrison, nothing to do but shoot it so he drains it. And you know who he emulates? You know whose idol is? His idol is the kid from French Lick, Indiana, Larry Bird. Has all of his mannerisms. If he only play 10% like Mr. Bird, they got a special player. Mark Pugh said he went to look at him in a high school game and said, you know what, he's not that fast. His shot looks a little funny. Picked up the score sheet at halftime. The kid had 30 points. He said, maybe I should recruit this guy. <laughs> they had 29 in that, like you said, yeah. exhibition game. Stolen by Ravio. Great anticipation into the passing lane. Now the pull-up three. Ah. Offensive rebound for the Zags. The big guys on the glass for Gonzaga. Kick out, and the three is there for Kyle Bankhead. Well, that's Bankhead's ability to shoot the three. I'm telling you right now, fast-paced game. They're already utilized nine players, Gonzaga, going to their bench. St. Joe's quicker, but Gonzaga deeper. You can see why that kettle rocks and rolls. Oh, yeah. That's so much to cheer for, I, so much to get excited about. I want to speak on behalf of the fans in Spokane. You have got to go to the kennel to do a game someday. <laughs> I know. Put it on your schedule. Tell my boss to send me there. <laughs> There's a three for Barley. Back and forth they go. And I think the organizers knew what they were doing when they scheduled this game as the feature game of this event. You know, Barley's a kid who really can play for a lot of teams as a starter, but because of Weston Nelson, he comes off the bench. Morrison tries to dump it off. Bankhead to the floor, and it's out of bounds to St. Joe's. You know, you think about the great backcourts in basketball. We'll get more on that when we come back. Midway through the first half, we're going to step aside. Doris Burke with a special story on Adam Morrison. Get his first bucket for the Zags. All that and more when we come back. In the red zone, the best way to defend against the play is to stop it before it starts. That's why I use new red zone deodorant from Old Spice. Red Zone's new odor defense system helps stop odor before it starts, and the scent lasts longer than the leading brand. New red zone deodorant from Old Spice. I'm shooting high, got my eye on a star in the sky. Body sprays from Old Spice. Spray it on in the morning, spice things up. Nice package. Body sprays from Old Spice. Spice things up. Meanwhile, at home... Hey, feed it, Squirt. Oh, you want something to drink? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll, I'll go get that. <laughs> okay. You're keeping time. It'll make you feel... Where's Kelly? She had to go. Linksys wireless media adapters share photos and music from PC to TV. Never before heard tapes, classified medical records, and revealing interviews with John F. Kennedy's inner circle. For the first time, experience the Kennedy presidency as only the History Channel can bring it to you. A 40th anniversary special, JFK, A Presidency Revealed. Sunday night at 8, 7 central, on the History Channel. A remarkable piece of television that defines his life rather than his death. First, I emptied the checking account, and then I hit the mall. And there in the window was this sexy little outfit, and oh my gosh, I just had to have it. $1,500 for a leather bustier? I didn't care. It lifts and separates. <laughs> Plus, it's not like I'm actually paying for it. <laughs> Introducing City Identity Theft Solutions, free with any city card. Help getting your life back, that's using your card wisely. St. Joe's up a point on Gonzaga midway through the first half. The Zags have a special case to deal with on their bench, and freshman Adam Morrison for more on that, Doris Burke. Adam Morrison, a diabetic, and alongside of Steve DeLong, the trainer, they have worked out a routine where in 20 seconds they can do a blood sugar test. They have to prick his finger, get a blood level, and if necessary, he's got to give himself a needle with insulin. Mark, you told us earlier in their exhibition games, he actually had to do it three times, checked himself, gave himself a needle. He said it's a little disconcerting to look over and see him stick a needle into his own body, but he said he seems to deal with it quite well. That's something that he's probably learned to deal with more than those around him as Barley gets free and knocks down a three. 
His second of the game, and the Hawks are up by four. You know, Marley, a good defensive player, but can't make that open three. Played for Seton Hall Prep in high school. He's a good player. Gives him three solid guards on a perimeter. Backdoor cut by Ravio, but nowhere to go. He's the smallest guy on the floor, pretty much, as they swing it around to the other side. Here's Morrison, and another block by Dwayne Jones. I told you Jones is going to be a major factor, Mr. Schulman. I told you he's going to bring a special dimension. Blocking shots. There he is now, going to rotate over. I mean, he's just got excellent timing. It is so special when you have that dimension to your defensive team. A redshirt sophomore out of Chester, Pennsylvania, same place that Jameer Nelson is from. Now the tap is good by Fox on the violet miss, and the Zags are back within a deuce. And there's Fox, the transfer from out of Colorado, really hanging around the basket, utilizing, taking advantage of that size. Blake Step is back into the game now for Gonzaga. Nelson fades away, and it rattles out. He loves that little fadeaway jump shot, just that rainbow J. Step looking pretty good after injuring himself a few minutes ago. Stayed in the game for a while, then went out for a couple of minutes. Morrison. All he does is score, says Mark Few. He's got an old-style game. Jump shots, floaters, runners, left hand, right hand, nothing fancy. Maybe not great athletic ability, but all he does is score. Well, he's got a great touch. A little walking violation on Morrison. Was the MVP at a Washington State tournament. He's got great touch. I mean, he's unbelievable. Third time, third all-time scorer in Washington 4A history. Nice to see a guy with a mid-range game, huh? One bounce and up with a jumper. Average 27 a game in his senior year. They recruited him when he was a junior, and he was only about 6'4 then. So Mark said nobody else was in on him. So, uh, uh, Gonzaga was really the only school interested in him. Then he grew about four inches a senior nice year. backdoor cut. What a great backdoor cut against a good defensive team. Remember, St. Joe's led the nation. Bill Martelli's an excellent teacher. His team led the nation. Field goal percentage last year, 37.2. And remember, these two teams have played each of the last two years, and each of them were outstanding games that went right down to the final second. And in the case of last year's game, into overtime and down to the final second. Another jumper goes down for Barley and give Nelson the assist. Barley says, wait a minute. You're talking about Wes. You're talking about Nelson. What about talking about me? At the other end, a three-pointer for Sean Mallon, a redshirt freshman out of Spokane who just checked in a minute ago. I tell you, Ravio Morrison, and certainly right there, Mallon, they got some three good-looking yep. young players. These are two outstanding teams, Barley or Nelson with a miss from outside. And they've developed quite a rivalry because of the two games they've played against one another the last couple of years. That's time to let the rest of the country in on the secret. Fox inside in heavy traffic. I'll tell you one thing, they really bang out the inside. They got a little walking violation call by the interior. And the St. Joe's fans didn't like it. We'll step aside. Gonzaga back on top by two. How did we design the Kia Sorento to attain the highest quality? How did it get the government's highest safety rating? How did we back it with such a great warranty and still price it thousands less than the competition? How did we do all this? We worked our freaking tails off. That's how. The obsessively perfected Kia Sorento. Get remaining 03 Sorentos for 19635 after 1000 cash back, plus 1000 owner loyalty bonus for qualified buyers. Success. It's more than numbers in the win column. It's a formula that finds its strength not in the individual, but in the team. A model built on the daily sacrifice of many. Part commitment, part confidence, part perseverance. The ingredients of a champion. I had been contemplating cosmetic surgery when I realized I could have it performed at a place that's confidential, the fee's reasonable, and is close to home. I asked my doctor to perform the surgery at Fairground Surgical Center. He reassured
assured her that here everything is kept confidential and she would receive the highest quality care. Fairground Surgical Center is fully accredited and licensed and specifically designed for outpatient surgery. It's your choice. Make it Fairground Surgical Center. This is ESPN Radio, 1230 WEEX Easton and 1160 WYNS, Lehighton and the Lehigh Valley. Mr. President. Hey, Dan, how are you? You know what? I could use a hug right now is what I could use. Sweetheart, over the line, dropped to the road, and he's got a man in front, took the shot, he scores! It's for Barber, runs right, seeking to the goal line, touchdown, Giants! Play action, rolling to his right, plant, throws. 1230 WEEX Easton and 1160 WYNS, Lehighton and the Lehigh Valley. Back here at Madison Square Garden, the final game of the Coaches versus Cancer Classic. Gonzaga up two on St. Joseph's. We told you about Adam Morrison. He is diabetic, and periodically during the course of the game, he has to check his blood sugar level and potentially give himself a needle, some insulin, to get his blood sugar level regulated. And he just did that during a timeout, and it's just second nature to him. It's, 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 something, yeah, it's something for us to sit here and watch it, as I'm sure it was for a lot of people at home. But for him, it's just part of his everyday life. What a good kid to come out there and play. Had an outstanding high school career, averaging 27 a game, the MVP of the Washington State Tournament, showing that he can battle adversity and overcome it. Blake Step ran a great backdoor cut when he caught Pip. He quit while he's staring at the basketball. Mallon with a couple of misses. Look at Skinner getting into the bucket, and the Zags are up by four. Skinner, a veteran who last year came in with a big-time reputation but had a little struggle shooting the ball early. And so many options for Mark Few this year because they legitimately go 10 deep, two at every position. Play a three guards right now with Barley, West, and Nelson. Small lineup for St. Joe's. Barley a little bit short. Rebound Morrison. Little hesitation. Baseline jumper over Stakaitis. Here's Larry Bird. I want to tell you what. He emulates Larry. Larry, are you watching? That's a kid from French Lick. Everything about him. He emulates his hero, his idol. From day one, he has loved Larry Bird. Not a bad guy to follow and well, emulate. Should have gotten Corey Violet to give up number 33. Morrison's wearing three instead. Delonte West tries to answer. And we got contact. Turioff is called for the foul. But let's go back again to Morrison and the play that he made. You don't see many kids able to make this kind of a shot. Just a little fadeaway jumper. He's got great touch. Got great touch. I'll tell you, he and Ravio have tremendous credentials. I was looking at Ravio. Averaged 29 points a game his senior year at Mountain High School in Vancouver, Washington. Unbelievable. The same league that produced guards like Dan Dickow and Richie Fromm. Now with the Supersonics who play for Gonzaga. Unbelievable what he did in high school. Got a tie-up between Jones and Turioff. Jones with three blocks already in this game. Three of the five that the Hawks have. The Arrows going to give it to the Zags. You know, the Zags, when I talk about Ravio, his dad got drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers and went on to play in Europe, played for the University of Portland. Now push in the back. And the foul's going to go on west as, again, the St. Joseph's fans don't like it. Better than 4,000 of them have made the trip north from Philadelphia in support of Phil Martelli's Hawks. You know what I think is really impressive, though, when you think about it right now? If you're a Hawk fan, West and certainly Nelson have not gotten going yet, and they're right within six. Yes, yeah, the outside shooting of Barley really early. That kept them in the game. Morrison again. Rebound Violet. And it's picked off by Chet Stachitis. Got to get a screen for Nelson. Got to get a screen. Got a little hole in the post. I was talking about some of the great backcourt combinations earlier. When you think about tandems that are outstanding across America, you got to think about certainly Raymond Felton and McCann standing at North Carolina, Kalik Brown and Gordon. What about Duhon Reddick and Ewing? Not much better than that, man. Mike Krzyzewski's got a dynamite trio. D. Brown and Delon Williams at Illinois outstanding. Billy Edel and Jerry McNamara yeah. up there at Syracuse. But this St. Joe's backcourt, as talented as any in the country. West off to Nelson. Look at all the moves that he makes. <laughs> and he <laughs> finds Stachitis, who misses the jumper. There's Nelson with a rebound. Well, at 5'11", look at the things that Jameer Nelson is making happen. His vision is rebounding. Step no. Nelson, another rebound. Heads up all the time on dribbling that ball. Heads up. 
Jameer Nelson with six rebounds and giving them an assist right there on the bucket by West. And there's the combination. They make great music together, just like Simon and Garfunkel are going to do here in early December. Get me some tickets, <laughs> will you, Dad? <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel at the Garden. St. Joe's back within four. Knight's going to come back into the game for the Zags at the next opportunity. They misstepped. Had a cut down the lane, was wide open. Morrison. Somebody got a piece of that ball. Might have been Jones again, and here comes St. Joe's. You know, it's really amazing. A kid like Morrison, not bashful. Here he is making his debut as a collegiate. Nelson somehow finds West. The three is there, and it's a one-point game. There's that combination I talked about. They were down six. Bottom line is those two were not scoring, and now they're starting to get it together, get that rhythm. Step with a nice speed to Skinner, and there's another block by Dwayne Jones. I mean, he may block 10 shots here tonight. Nelson, the floater, won't go, but he draws the foul. Well, we got so many highlights to show you from this game. Let's start with this outstanding backcourt play by the Hawks. Well, you take a look at West with a reverse layup. He had back-to-back -back games last year, putting 30 on the board. And there's the little dash. He goes to his buddy. He says, shoot it, knock it down, Mr. West. What music they made. Nelson and West, as good as Simon and Garfunkel <laughs> to the people in Hawk Hill. Nelson at the line for the Hawks. Meanwhile, at the other end, Dwayne Jones been a human eraser down there. He's got five blocks already in this game. And he's also from Chester, Pennsylvania. Look at this right here. Block shot. Seven. St. Joe's. Unbelievable. And Jones with five of them all by himself. Again, he led the Atlantic 10 in block shots last year at about two a game. In spite of the fact he only played about half the time, about 20 minutes a night. He may lead the nation this year because his minutes are going to increase. When I think about St. Joe's, I think of Dr. Jack Ramsey, one of the great minds ever in a game of basketball. Pressure basketball, his book. I got it as a kid, man, and I read it and read it and read it. Jameer Nelson to the bench with eight points, six rebounds, and five assists. Knight tries to find Turrioff, and it's out of bounds to St. Joe's. Don't forget tomorrow night ESPN and ESPN2 with a couple of great college football games. It's the backyard brawl between Pitt and West Virginia on ESPN2 and then over on ESPN in high definition at 745 Eastern, number three LSU, taking on Alabama. You know, I was asked today on Sports Center, can they get hired in the number seven seed? Will they get that kind of respect? Hey, who, Gonzaga? Gonzaga? Yeah. yeah, and the bottom line is they're going to have to win big games. Games like this, games with Maryland, games with Missouri, because they can't get the necessary point totals playing in their right. league. So when they get the chance to play the big timers, they must win. And remember this, it's unbelievably incredible. They play all those teams away from home. Because nobody will come to their building. You might get a neutral site game, and Missouri is going up to Seattle to play. Georgia will play in Spokane Arena, but most of the games are on the road. And they're also going to play Maryland, as you mentioned. They're going to play Stanford, and they're going to play Tulsa, the bracket buster again in February. They're playing Stanford at a Seymour Classic, a great classic, named after a super, super guy. God, it's Mr. Basketball. Step runs down the loose ball. We're tied at 29 in a very exciting first half, and there is Stachitis calling for the foul, using the body on Step. You know, you mentioned playing Missouri up in Seattle. One of the reasons, because Quinn Snyder is from that area. Tied at 29. We got a good one going here at MSG. What does it take to keep up with the mind of an 8-year-old? Just some ingenuity from the cable industry and schools all across America. At Cable in the Classroom, we provide tools for parents and teachers. Thought-provoking, satisfying, and child-stimulating tools to help kids learn in ways that are fresher, faster, and more relevant to the speed of 21st century childhood than anything that has ever come before. <sighs> Get up to speed. Visit Cable in the Classroom at ciconline.org. Tour and beat him at his own game. Tiger Woods, PGA Tour 2004. Ready to be one. Tee off online only on PlayStation 2. EA Sports. It's in the game.
Inside that microphone is something familiar, a battery. And while you might think all batteries are the same, consider this. When Bon Jovi puts on a show, the battery that powers their microphones is always a Duracell. So whether you've got 50,000 screaming fans or you're working a slightly smaller room, it just has to work. Duracell, trusted everywhere. Great game so far, tied at 29, the Zags and the Hawks. Doris Burke was over near the Gonzaga huddle. Here she is. Mark Few just told his guys, listen, we're doing what got us in trouble last year. When they dribble drive and are leaning and shooting off balance shots, we're leaning in. Move your feet, slide, and get in good defensive position. When they're shooting off balance shots, do not lean into them. Jameer Nelson, an example there where he's shooting a floater. No contact. He also told his inside guys, listen, let's go in and pound the basketball. We've got the advantage inside. Don't shoot shots on their terms. No quick threes. Mark, uh, Don, Dan. All sorry. right, Doris, thank you. Well, they used that size to their advantage a little bit early, but they haven't done it as much lately. And they do have the advantage inside if they can. Pound it on the interior. Look at Earl Knight. Oh, my. What hops does he have? And again, Mark Hughes says, we've never had this kind of an athlete before, a guy who can go out and make plays like Knight just made. Well, he's an explosive athlete. You take a look at Mark Few, one of the bright stars on a coaching horizon. You're going to watch that athletic ability he's talking about, ability to really elevate. He's an elevator man, man. He's got those great hops. Turioff wants the ball inside. Knight for three. Yes. He's going to be a big asset. The big question mark facing Mark Few, whenever you have those that many players, is trying to decide who's going to be on that floor and getting a minutes. You've got to be very careful of trying to satisfy everybody. You just saw the numbers, the incredible numbers that Gonzaga is putting up in the offensive glass of the second chance points. That was Phil Martelli's single biggest concern coming into this game here tonight. You heard him tell Reese to the guys that they were down 13-0 in rebounds in the game last year against Gonzaga. Earl Knight's a guy they're counting on to be an old Marco Polo. Yeah, especially thinking there he is right now on a wing, came from the University of Washington, transferred, should be an impact player, just like Lawrence Roberts will be down at Mississippi State, Will Bynum at Georgia Tech from Arizona, Jason Connolly when he gets eligible from Missouri, from out of VMI, and also you watch Jammin' James White yep. from Florida for Cincinnati. He's going to bring many a smile, and the guy doesn't smile too often <laughs> on the face of Bobby Hunter. <laughs> At the line for the Hawks, Pat Carroll, again, Matt's younger brother. Pat's a lefty, but an equally talented shooter led the Atlantic 10 in three-point percentage last year. He'll come out as Barley comes in. His brother Matt just got picked off by the, I believe, Portland Trailblazers. Yes. You know, Matt just had a terrific four years at Notre Dame. I know you got a chance to watch him a lot. He just worked hard and worked just like Pat does and made himself into an NBA caliber player. Yes, he did. Going a little four-court trap right now. Phil Martelli does an excellent job on that bench. He just liked the guy. He's one of those real likable people. Steph. Nice not pass. By a land and it's blocked. No, it's not. It's a foul on Jones as the whistle came a little bit late, and Jones thought he had yet another block shot. I think Jones rotating over inside. He's going to make people conscious of the fact that he's on the interior. There he is rotating over with the block a little bit late. He's already been credited with five blocks here tonight. He might have gotten the ball clean, got the left forearm down in the chest of Violet. Maybe that's where the contact was and where the call came from. That's amazing. I mean, it seems like Violet's been here for 10 years. Yeah, it's right. unbelievable. Violet <laughs> seems like he's been here All those forever. guys, Santangelo and Fromm and Gordon, uh, seems like all of them were there forever. Hey, 1999, they came so close to getting to the Final Four. We have not had a team from without the power, from not coming from the power conferences in the Final Four since 79 when Penn out of the Ivy and the kid from French Lick, Indiana, Tyreed Indiana State to the Final Four, the year that the Magic Man cut the nets down. And now we've got the next generation of the kid from French Lick, right? And Adam Morrison, the guy who emulates right. him, trying to help his team to the Final Four. Here's Steph. Boy, a lot of bump in there. And, oh, it's on Steph! We're getting the forearm out there. Offensive foul. <laughs> Steph has been defended by West and Nelson and Barley tonight. And he is just 
having a tough time because he's playing all these minutes and they are using the body on him and they are using their quickness on him. I don't know about that call. Yeah. Mid, yeah. mid court area, to me, that's a no call. Navio back into the game and now for Gonzaga. He's defending West with the ball. I'll tell you, Ravio, I like him. He comes on the court. He's got great spark. Nelson are being defended by Knight, who's about seven inches taller than he is. West bobbles. Nelson recovers. Eight on the oh, shot clock. He's got a great change of direction, Jermaine Nelson. A great front change. Freeze him. In an outstanding first half between the Bulldogs of Gonzaga and the Hawks of St. Joseph's. The feature game here in the four-game two-night, Coaches versus Cancer Classic. Two ranked teams, number 12 Gonzaga, number 18 St. Joe's, both overwhelming favorites in their own conferences, and both in the minds of Dick Vitale and many others, teams that potentially have what it takes to get all the way to the Final Four. Oh, they can beat anybody on a given day. There's no doubt about it. I mean, these clubs, you better be prepared against them. If they stay healthy, they're going to be a legit threat. I mean, last year, Auburn goes to the Sweet 16. Yep. I mean, if there's a healthy, for example, Valenti West in that game, they may not win that game, Auburn, to get where they're at. But they played hurt, and that's the key to, Dan, when you're talking about Mark, not losing key players. Well, how about Gonzaga losing in double overtime to Arizona in the second oh, round? Incredible. Blake Stepp has a shot that he probably hits nine times out of ten it just didn't drop for him that day otherwise who knows what kind of a run Gonzaga may have had it, last it year. was one of the great games ever in college basketball Ravio the freshman at the line gives Gonzaga a six-point lead step on the bench right now having played a lot of minutes and having to work awfully hard every single possession to get the ball up the floor against this very quick St. Joe's perimeter. See, last year, they would really take a real drop-off with Steph going to the sideline. But we're robbing you right now to run the point. I mean, that kid has got some understanding of the game, and he's really seems fearless. New guys are Ravio, the freshman, Morrison, the freshman, Knight, the transfer, is now eligible. I mean, they got a lot of extra bodies this year. I mean, he's going against an All-American right now, and he's not backing down. Tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern on ABC, you can see number 10, Purdue, taking on number 4, Ohio State, in a Big Ten showdown. Others will see Kansas State, Nebraska, NC State, Florida State, or Arizona State, Washington State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Ohio State right now third in the BCS standings. St. Joe's 13-1 last year at home. Their only loss was to Xavier. David Weston Company beat them in overtime. When I think of St. Joe's, I think of a great win. I will never forget when Jimmy Lynham shocked America when they beat number one to four in the NCAA tournament. Jimmy, a great teacher, great clinician, does a phenomenal job as a speaker at camps. Ravio continues to knock down free throws. The 6-1 freshman out of Vancouver, Washington. Much of the talent that Gonzaga has does come from the Pacific Northwest, but they're starting to broaden their horizons a little bit as more and more high school players learn about Gonzaga and the quality of the program, Gonzaga becoming more and more of a national program. You know, Ravio grew up in Europe. He was born in Belgium. His dad was playing all over the European leagues until he was 10 years of age. Toriyev's really amazing. Speaks five languages. I wish I could speak one. Nelson again being defended by Knight, and now... Knight is going to be called for the foul. 23 seconds away from halftime. Reese, Digger, Jay, and Steve will give you all the nuggets you need to know on the college basketball season just underway. Plus, a look back at our first game tonight, Pittsburgh and Alabama. I really believe that this year you're going to see a couple of games where Nelson's going to have 40-point explosions. I really believe that's the kind of score this kid is going to be. Dick Hoops Weiss, my buddy, absolutely loves him. You know, and he did it right, too. He went to the pre-draft camp. He didn't hire an agent, so he retained his eligibility. He played well by all accounts of the pre-draft camp, but he wasn't guaranteed. He couldn't get people to guarantee him he'd be a first-round pick. He wanted to finish his education, knew this team could have a great year if he came back, and he made what I know you think is the right decision, one that he'll probably be thankful for many years from now. Well, he would not have been a guaranteed first-round selection. Like Mo Williams, who went was a second-round selection, was the eighth guard, point guard taken. And the significance of that, if you're a first-round pick, is a guaranteed, guaranteed contract. contract. Right, second-round pick. You're struggling. That. You're begging and pleading. Ooh, not even Knight could come down with that Aaron pass from Bankhead. And now St. Joe's will get the ball back. Good job by Phil Martelli changing the defenses. 
Dad here, his dad and mom married 50 years. Yeah, one of the referees toppling over some cheerleaders. That's Reggie Cofer hitting the floor down at the far end. <laughs> hey, you know what's really interesting? Last year, Gonzaga went to the free throw line 202 times more than their opponents, meaning they're really were on pounding the ball yeah. inside, getting the ball to the interior. My old Rolls Royce teams, my top 10 players in America, Jameer Nelson is one of them. And who's uh, who's the first teamers? Give me the five first teamers. Well, you know, we go Okafor, Hodge, Paul Dean, I love him, Missouri, Chris Thomas, Notre Dame, Mike Diago, then you talk Nelson, Arthur Johnson, Romain Sato, Luke Jackson of Oregon, and Darius Rice down in Miami. 30-second timeout here, and as we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball, time to flash back into the ESPN archives. Don't even think about recap tonight. Stay up. This is going to be a lot of fun. Kick out less than two seconds. That's oh! the news. Lobo's running, looking to tie, or maybe the lead. Here come the Zags with a chance to win it. It's a charge, and we're going to overtime. Marlins spins, spins, scores. New Mexico by one. Dick Al penetrating, floating, banking, scoring. How cool was that? New Mexico showed me a lot tonight. Gonzaga showed me a little bit more. Fr Fran Priscilla, now one of us in that shot. An outstanding, exciting overtime win for Gonzaga. That was Dan Dickow, and what a career Dan Dickow had been after the transfer. What a... What a couple of years he had at Gonzaga, really taking the program to a new level. And now Mark Few, with all the talent he's got here, try to maintain that level, maybe even to get further in the tournament than they've ever been before. Well, Dick Al in the NBA right now with the Atlanta Hawks. Anybody can make an NBA roster has got to be special. Nelson, he's special. The follow is good by Stakaitis. Stakaitis right there with that kick. And I say special. Today it is so difficult. When you see some outstanding guys on a collegiate level who are waved and cut in the NBA, it shows you how difficult it is to make an NBA roster. Point seven of a second left. Gonzaga with the ball up four. Remember, if it's ever point three, the only way you can score is with a tip in. Knight does not get it off in time as the first half comes to a close. Looks like maybe the third nail biter in as many years for Gonzaga and St. Joseph's. Jameer Nelson with a big first half. Blake Stepp, the number's not quite there for the All-American from Gonzaga. What a very exciting first half, and we look forward to more great NCAA action when we come back. First, though, Doris Burke standing by with the head coach of Gonzaga, Mark Few. Mark, as expected, Jameer Nelson and Delonte West, they combined for 20. How do you do a better job with them in the second half? Well, I mean, they're going to take the majority of their shots. we got to make sure we drive their percentages down, but those guys are going to score a majority of their points because they take the majority of their shots. You nearly doubled them up on the boards, yet you only lead by four. Can you get better inside play? Yeah, we need to finish a lot of those shots inside. We missed a lot of bunnies in there that we need to just slow down, take it up strong, and shoot the shot on our turn. Good luck in the second half. Dan, back to you. All right, Doris, thank you. A big second half to come and a big halftime show to come. Rich Davis, Ginger Phelps, Jay Billis, and Steve Lavin when we come back. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by the Panasonic DVD recorder. Watch whatever you want, whenever you want. Panasonic, ideas for life. The volcano is a sleeping giant. Anytime it can stir. Even when it's quiet, a volcano has a lot to say about our planet. My job is to listen to the volcano. TIA aircraft manages money for Dr. Harold or Secretson. Volcanoes, that's what I think about. TIA aircraft managing money for people with other things to think about. Mankind's greatest invention? Fire was clever. <laughs> the telephone. The automobile. And the DVD. But wouldn't it be great if you could record on this? Presenting the Panasonic DVD recorder. My shows, my home movies, even my photos. The incomparable picture, sound, and ease of DVD. Now yours with total control recording to watch whatever, whenever you want. Now this is genius. The DVD recorder in Panasonic. Ideas. I'm U.S. Attorney. 
Pat Union. I'm Northampton County District Attorney John Morganelli. Together, we are making a federal case out of gun crime. If you have prior arrests, you better think twice about carrying that gun. If my federal prosecutors take your case, you would likely spend years in a federal prison, even if you have a good lawyer. Don't believe me? Just ask one. If you've got a prior felony conviction, and you're caught with a gun, not even I can get you off. Felons with guns. Due time. When you talk about important design features, the GMC Envoy can teach the imports a lesson. Because with a tighter turning radius and more horsepower than Honda Pilot, Toyota 4Runner, and Lexus RX 330, the Envoy is engineered to be in a class of its own. Right now, lease a 2004 Envoy 4x4 SLE for around $329 a month. Call for residency restrictions and lease details. See the pros at your GMC dealers. I know there's probably some action out on the streets of New York, but they've got nothing out there that we don't have in here. Madison Square Garden, 38-34, Gonzaga on top of St. Joseph's. Halftime of our marquee game in the Coaches versus Cancer Classic. Earlier tonight, you might have heard the story that Mark Few was over visiting close by us, and a guy walked up to him and said, uh, excuse me, sir, can, can you show me where these tickets are? No idea that he was the Gonzaga head coach. Most of the fans here tonight pretty astute. They know their nuggets of information. We've got a few things that perhaps you might want to know as you get ready to watch this 2003-2004 college basketball season. And Syracuse has won, and they are the national champions of college basketball. For the first time in NCAA history, one conference boasts champions across the board. This season, the Big East and Conference USA will boast a single division setup across its board. Coaching milestones. The 700 Club awaits two new members as Lute Olsen and John Chaney near the mark, while Coach K is one away from the Wizards mark. New coaches in old places. Roy Williams isn't in Kansas anymore, but Bill Self is back after 16 years. For Bill Self, this is the beginning of his era at Kansas. Old coaches in new places. Drake takes Dr. Tom Davis out of retirement, and Dick Bennett returns to the hardwood to rebuild Washington State. Old coaches in old places. Billy Tubbs relocates to Lamar, and with his son Scott off to Baylor, Homer heads home to Valpo. The student takes on the teacher. Billy Donovan's Gators travel to Louisville to square off with Rick Pitino. Steve Alford's Hawkeyes head south to Lubbock to face Bob Knight and Texas Tech. Bill Self will meet up with his former mentor, Eddie Sutton, in Lawrence. Transfer side. 2002's leading scorer, Jason Conley, shows up at Missouri, while another Tiger, Wesley Stokes, changed his stripes to become an Aztec. Ohio State sports its own transfers as J.J. Sellinger and Tony Stockman could make the Big Ten's best backcourt. James White plays for the Bearcats this season, while former Wildcat Will Bynum heads to Georgia Tech. Former Orangeman Deshaun Williams now suits up for Iona. Streaks. Western Kentucky has won 39 straight at Diddle Arena. Starters. Only three tournament teams return all five starters. UConn, East Tennessee State, and Austin P. There's a lot to look forward to this upcoming basketball season. Some new faces, as well as some familiar ones. There will be dreams accomplished, and some left incomplete. But one thing is certain, it's time to tip. And we've got it tipped here in the Coaches versus Chancellor Classic. What about it, Jay? What nugget have you got for us? Well, our friend Dick Vitale talked about the nation's best backcourts, one that he omitted, Mustafa Shakur and Salim Stoudemire at the University of Arizona. Shakur, just a freshman, 6'3", very long, pushes the ball up the court. He and Stoudemire, by the end of the year, will be among the best backcourts. Also, Wesley Stokes, he of the long locks, got a haircut. <laughs> got a no, haircut. No. Yep, got a haircut. Well, we talk about that Pac-10. Let's not talk about Arizona. We got to talk about Stanford. I don't know why they're not in the top 10. Hey, preseason, they're not running. 17th and 19th. They're better than that. That's where they're ranked right now. But understand Stanford only lost one player. Nine of their ten top players are coming back. Julius Barnes is gone. But when you look at Justin Davis, Josh Childress, 
They can play. Mike Gun Montgomery can coach. They will challenge Arizona for the Pac-10 championship. I think a neat story. We've seen for years the NBA, someone like a Tex winner is a former head coach, uh, help an NBA team as an assistant. And now we're seeing that in college. Two guys that come to mind, Tom Asbury at Alabama, former head coach at Pepperdine, had some dominant years. Kansas State, he struggled some, but he's a heck of a coach, and he's helping Mark Godfrey. Larry Hunter at NC State, former head coach at Ohio University, now really helping the Wolfpack. It's nice to see people like Godfrey and... and um, here. Yeah, but also the head coach of NC State, Herbie Sinday, oh, Herb Sinday yeah. Yeah. to help to, to uh, have the, the, the security to uh, to bring in coaches like that to help them out. And before the end of the season, Lavin's going to go from the slick back to the blow dry, back to the old days. <laughs> That's why if but Wesley Mark Stone can get his hair cut, then anything can happen. Lavin will be out of hair gel before it's over. Hey, Andy Katz has some very good news from the Pittsburgh Panthers after they defeated Alabama now opening game tonight. We will check in with Andy and Jameer Nelson. He's been guarded by Gonzaga. He's put up enough. It's a tight game at the break. I'm sorry, Murchie. This is Greg. Sir, I've got a signal that your airbag is deployed. I'm going to contact police and let them know that where you are, okay? OnStar is available on 51 GM models. Excuse me. How do you feel about your stockbroker? The truth? I do all the research, he makes all the money. Please, with all the ideas I come up with, he should be paying me. Oh, we feel great. We switched to TD Waterhouse and we never look back. Why pay all that money to Merrill or Schwab? TD Waterhouse has free, objective research that makes it easy to come up with your own ideas and validate them yourself. I've never seen research like this online. So switch to TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher-priced brokers like Merrill and Schwab. times closer. Now that's a powerful zoom. Zoom, 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 zoom. The Ultra Zoom from Olympus. Designed to do more. Zoom, 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 zoom. Big Ben Wallace. I think you're going in the wrong direction, bruh. Listen, dog. I'm beat. Some other time. Oh, 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 dog, huh? Let me tell you something. ESPN NBA basketball. I've lived the 24-7 mode, and I've achieved the ISO motion. I can clear the court to one side and take it one on one. So nobody is better than Reg. Ha-ha. <laughs> the way I dunk on you is going to look unorthodox. Rated E for everyone. This is Donna from Monster. Yes. I have been on the line with the police the whole time. They have recovered your vehicle. Donna. Yes, sir. I love you. We love you, too. OnStar is available on 51 GM models. Halftime, Madison Square Garden, coaches versus Cancer, the nightcap of our second night of action, and number 12, Gonzaga, with a 38-34 lead over St. Joseph's. It is certainly the marquee matchup, and these two teams have not disappointed so far in the first half. Our opening game here on Friday night, Pittsburgh against Alabama. Jamie Dixon making his head coaching debut for the Panthers. Alabama's been concerned about his inside game. Jay, Chuck Davis played well. Chuck Davis, a career-high 20 points. He really anchored the inside. Alabama, only two players on their roster, over 210 pounds. Pittsburgh, just too strong. Julius Page and Jerron Brown got it going, but Carl Krauser was really the guy in the second half. Krauser just took the game over assist points, making things happen, doing everything they needed to do to get it done. But Pitt really struggled shooting four for 20 on threes. Page was only two for eight, did not have a good night. Krauser had 19 of his 21 in the second half as Pitt won the game 71-62. Andy Katz was working down in the locker room afterwards, and Andy, I guess Jamie Dixon was celebrated in fine fashion, did he not? Well, I'll tell you, Jamie Dixon was actually pretty calm. In fact, uh, he went calmly into the locker room and checked his cell phone messages. And, of course, there was one from former Pittsburgh head coach Ben Howland. Now, they didn't get a chance to watch the game because they were practicing. But as soon as the game ended, Ben Howland got, got in, uh, turned on ESPN2, saw the score, and immediately left a message congratulating his former assistant. Jamie said he actually spoke with him two to three times last night and really tried to, uh, you know, really encourage Dixon, uh, you know, for this game. Now, one of the things that... Uh, that assistant coach Barry Rorson told me is that when he was asked who has been the most impressive person in practice 
It wasn't drawn, it wasn't Page, it wasn't Brown, it wasn't Troutman. He constantly said it was Jamie Dixon. He said that Dixon has never changed his attitude, his demeanor. He's been calm throughout the practices, throughout this transition. He thinks he's been the most important person in this program so far. And they also said it took a lot of guts for him to schedule his first game on national television here in Madison Square Garden. He could start 15-0 because he doesn't leave Pittsburgh the rest of the preseason, the rest of the non-conference. Breach? All right, Andy, and Jamie Dixon certainly didn't seem to be bothered by the entire surroundings here. But let's talk about our game right now. Gonzaga and St. Joseph's four-point game at the break. Steve, what kind of second-half adjustments would you make? Well, Gonzaga's got to feel good. They're up four, and their key leader, Blake Stepp, hasn't really had an exceptional game. So to come here, basically a road game, because obviously St. Joe's has traveled a lot of people here today. Uh, that's a pretty good situation to be in. Up four, and Blake Stepp, you know he's going to play better in the second half. Gonzaga's got to finish plays. They're, they're dominating the glass. They're getting some inside looks. They've got to go up stronger and get contact and get to the free throw line. But a good adjustment by Mark Few in the first half. St. Joseph's was switching every screen, and he went more to an extended offense and started passing and cutting, and that really opened things up, I thought, for Gonzaga. The difference in the first half, though, for Gonzaga obviously had to be the boards. They got pounded on the boards. St. Joe's had 14 to 4 negative. They only had four offensive rebounds, and that's where Gonzaga got a lot of easy points, getting 14 offensive rebounds. So the boards now, you can shoot those threes, and you can try to get points, but if you don't score, that's where St. Joe's not getting those second-chance points. Well, Gonzaga's found a lot of weapons, a lot of guys that can score. Uh, Mr. Morris, who did you compare him to, Dennis? Oh, there's Larry Bird. I said that in the pre-show. Love this guy. He's going to be a Sweet player. little shot. Mr. London, your vehicle should be unlocked. Oh, you guys are absolute geniuses. You are wonderful. Glad we could be of assistance. OnStar is available on 51 GM models. Meanwhile, at home... Hey, feed it, squirt. Oh, you want something to drink? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll, I'll go get that. <laughs> okay. You're cheating hard. It'll make you... Where's Kelly? She had to go. Linksys wireless media adapters share photos and music from PC to TV. What does the white button do? You can make and receive calls while you're driving, hands-free. <laughs> I can't believe this! OnStar is available on 51 GM models. This eating healthy stuff just lost its luster. Is it time to try the latest Hollywood fad? Adopt the diet of a generally South Pacific Island people, or give up. Actually, it's time to dig into My Shield Online from Highmark Blue Shield, where you can find weight loss tips, exercise info, and even a truly tasty, balanced meal. It's the kind of high involvement that helps you have a greater hand in your health. Tonight at 11, you're on the Do Not Call list. So why do some telemarketers still call and call and call? Now you can fight back and collect cash. Action News' Nidia Han shows you how to make telemarketers pay for bugging you. I got a $25 check. Plus, hang up several times a week and always dinner time. Action News exposes the worst of the worst. Hang up now. How you can make telemarketers pay. Tonight on Channel 6 Action News at 11. Exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by OnStar. Always there, always ready. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden in New York City. This is the final game of the Coaches versus Cancer Classic. Gonzaga 38 and St. Joseph's 34. A chance to catch our breath during halftime. That was some kind of a pace in the first half. Great stories. Jameer Nelson played great. Dwayne Jones with five blocks. Adam Morrison really opened up some eyes. But the offensive rebounding, I mean, yeah, Gonzaga just dominated. That's our game track. They just dominated the glass against this much smaller St. Joseph's team. Yeah, well, that's a real strong shoe when you look at Gonzaga. That's why they got the four-point lead. Bottom line is, though, you think about West and you think about Nelson, they certainly have not shot the ball exceptionally well. But inside, it's been the domination on the offensive boards by Gonzaga. Their size is certainly a big plus. When you look at Torrio and Violet, guys that can really hop like Knight. And that has been really, really a great 
complete asset for them. An overwhelming rebounding advantage for the much bigger Gonzaga team and obviously a corresponding advantage in second chance points. The high score in the game, Jameer Nelson with 10, Corey Violet, 10 rebounds, Dwayne Jones of St. Joe's five blocks in an action-packed first half. Let's go to Doris Burke. Thanks, Dan. I asked St. Joe's about that significant rebound differential. He said, listen, the fact of the matter is they're bigger and stronger inside. Our field goal percentage defense is right where we want it to be. He said the only thing we can do is continue to attack on the offensive end, use the dribble to test their foot speed. So look for more dribble drive from St. Joe's in the second half. Well, I guess to oversimplify, Dick, it's the classic matchup of size versus speed, and you always tend to focus on the size advantages coming into the game, but then in the game, you see that speed has just as many advantages. Well, speed and ability to shoot the ball. Kyle certainly has not been able to get any looks at all. And that really hurts St. Joe's. He's such an outstanding shooter. What a drive right there by Nelson. I think you're going to see a big half here out of Nelson. I really do. And remember this. Steph, who's been slow to loot by an injury out in the first half, was one for seven. And we haven't seen this team. As Mark Few said, this team has not been together. They've had so many injuries. West with a steal, look ahead to Carroll, and just like that, the Hawks have tied the game. And they're jumping with joy in Hawk Hill. Believe me, they're jumping with joy in Chester, PA. And remember, there are thousands of them, and at least oh, 4,000 wow. here. How about Morrison? I'll tell you, Morrison, unique. I mean, you look at him, run up and down the court, you say, there's no way he can play at this level. Flat out, he can play. He can shoot the basketball, moves well without the ball. As Mark Few says, all he does is score. You just can't find a way to stop him because he can score in so many different ways. West, Carroll, quick trigger. They're trying to get him some looks. He's too good of a shooter not to get some touches. And the Hawks are back on top, 41-40. to Nelson doing a good job. Checking Steph, who's an outstanding offensive threat. And there's a bump on Nelson to picking up. His second foul, Doris Burke talked about Phil Martelli wanting to use the foot speed, the dribble drive, to set up some scoring well, chances. Well, that's dribble drive, but utilize the screen really well to get down that lane. A lot of teams are really going to that dribble drive penetration, but it certainly helps when you got outstanding guards yeah. that can make that happen. And Nelson, one of those guys, one of the premier guards, one of the premier players in college basketball. Oh, there's no doubt about it, Dan. He is superstar all over him. Bill Martelli says he's the best player in college basketball, and he's a better person than he is a player. He gushes about Jameer Nelson. I'd gush about him, too, if I coach <laughs> some. I mean, I'd be gushing and gushing. Step finds Morrison. That helps you to get a seven-year contract extension. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I know one thing. He sees the same barber you and I do. I was teasing him about that. <laughs> he takes the teasing pretty well. He doesn't mind, just like you. I'm still learning to deal with the teasing. <laughs> Here's Carroll. John Bryant, good D there by Violet to cut him off on the baseline. Gotta get some screens for Carroll. Nice. Nice play. I mean, are you kidding me? Created by the all common center sin. I mean, that's drive, draw, and dish. The three D man. As he gets into the lane and hands the rock off. Nelson with seven assists already. And Gonzaga needs a timeout. Remember I told you, he's going to have a big second half. He's going to score and he's going to create. The Hawks have outscored the Zags 9-2 to so far here in the second half. And the All-American, Jameer Nelson, is the biggest reason why. Take a look at right now. A little shake and bake. Get in the lane. Mr. Nelson dishes the rock. And there's the little jam by Brian. They did it. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. The volcano is a sleeping giant. Anytime it can stir. Even when it's quiet, a volcano has a lot to say about our planet. My job is to listen to the volcano. TIAA Craft manages money for Dr. Harold or Secretson. Volcanoes, that's what I think about. TIAA Craft, managing money for people with other things to think about. Mr. London, your vehicle should be unlocked. Oh, you guys are absolute geniuses. You are wonderful. Glad we could be of assistance. OnStar is available on 51 GM models.
airport? Well, my name is Jim. I would love to smell your limo, Jim. Oh, yeah, well, it's a new car. I love that new car. Yeah, I wish it was mine. Oh, it's so good, Jim. It's leather. <laughs> I don't play for fame. I don't need your approval. I don't tell you what you want to hear. I ball. And I don't get them anywhere else. I'm sorry, Murchie. This is Greg. Sir? I've got a signal that your airbag is deployed. I'm going to contact police and let them know where you are, okay? OnStar is available on 51 GM models. The final game of the Coaches versus Cancer Classic has lived up to expectations so far. St. Joe's up by three on a Gonzaga, along with Dick Vitale and Doris Burke. I'm Dan Schulman here at Madison Square Garden, and the story in the first two and a half minutes of the second half, Dick, the outstanding playmaking ability of Jameer Nelson. Yeah, it's been the Nelson show. We've expected that. 12 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists. He's done a heck of a job here in the second half. A little smile on his face. Certainly Blake Stepp not smiling. We got a little smile right there, but he knows that he certainly has been a little hindered. You know, and I think there's a real healthy respect between these two programs. Again, they played each other last year and the year before, and I think they can kind of relate to one another. They're two great teams that don't get as much respect nationally as they should. A lot of other schools won't play them because they're, you know, they're kind of afraid to lose to them, and, and in the RPI, they might suffer and all that. That's an old right. story, but I, I think these two programs can really relate to one another. Oh, I think there's tremendous respect. There's no doubt about it. Hey, they ran this play once in the first half. Better recovery by St. Joe's to snuff it out here in the second half. Turion might have gotten away with a walk. Step for three. And another rebound for Nelson. Look at the little guy go get it. I'll tell you, they need that jump shot to start the fall for Step. Sixth rebound for Nelson to go with a dozen points and seven assists. They're going to be a different basketball team when they get a healthy Turion. He gets into the rhythm, starts practicing. Remember, he's only been with them for one day. Yep. And Tony Skinner has had a bad knee in the preseason. Earl Knight missed some time with a bad ankle. The Zags are not a fully healthy team. Nelson steps in. It won't go down, but the offensive rebound frees up West for a good look. They went into a zone, 2-3, matchup. Tough to zone this club. With the shooters they have with West, Carroll and Nelson, very difficult to give them any kind of gap or any kind of scene. Largest lead of the night for the Hawks. A double out of the perimeter on Violet. He's going to take it to the hoop. And he lost the handle on the ball a little bit as he was trying to get it up and toward the rim. Hey, one thing about West, he plays under control. A lot of boys about him. A little battle on the inside. Good rebound. Kick the ball out. Pat Carroll with the rebound, and West knocks down the three. He's got that poise. His poise usually leads to points. Nelson and West shot just six for 22 in the first half, but they both come out playing very well here in the second half. You know, six for 22, but I know that West had so many shots, the way he shot them, real soft touch, they just didn't fall in, but they were really close. Bill Martelli going in right now, fourth winner as a coach at St. Joe's, the leader Bill Ferguson with 309 wins, Dr. Jack Ramsey with 234, Jim Boyle 151, and Mr. Martelli has 149. Carroll with a good look. He can shoot it, he can flat out shoot the rock. You give him any kind of look, there was a time last year in the middle of the season he was shooting better than 50 percent. A T.O. baby call by Mr. Fuse. Oh, they're rocking and rolling in Hawkville land. Over 4,000 here. On to Julia said the A.D., the fine A.D., that may be 6,000. That's the kick out. By Nelson again. Yes, sir. Nelson creates it. His penetration ability leads to the opportunities. Oh, look at that flag. I'm going to run around with that flag. They're turning Madison Square Garden into their own home court here. And so far tonight, you can't guard them. Thousands of St. Joe's fans up from Philly for this game. Loving every minute. 
of this second half. There's, There's the, the Hawks mascot. Chris Bertolino, Phil Martelli telling us a story. Bertolino's the guy inside the costume, has lost almost 100 pounds since wow. he got to campus as a freshman. I tell you, Bertolini, Martelli, the Julia. I mean, it I'm, sounds I'm like an Italian construction company. <laughs> Don Julia did a great job as a player, played for Dr. Ramsey. They were 26 and 1 in 64 and 65 when he played on the team. Former commissioner of the MA, MAAC. Now the Zags had a four-point lead coming into the second half, but it's 15-2 St. Joseph's since the break. Violet, and another block for Dwayne Jones. It's a broken record, but that's his sixth. I'll tell you, he's really owning that three-second area in terms of blocking shots, making, making people think twice, bringing the ball into the lane. Nelson and West and Carroll at the offensive end, but it's Dwayne Jones getting it done at the defensive end for the Hawks. A new version of the Two Towers in the special extended edition DVD. Mr. Bruno! New and extended scenes. Magonda! Crafted by Peter Jackson. He fears what you have become. Exclusively for DVD. Only November 18th. everywhere November 26th. Hey guys, meet the new guy. Hey. Hi, I'm Bob Holtzkamp. Hey, Hi. help yourself to some snacks. Speaking of which, you know what would taste good about now? Yeah, a big, hot and juicy cheeseburger. With everything. I can almost taste it. Telling me, if there are a place to get a hamburger that good this late, I'd not only drive, I'd buy. Really? Wendy's classic hamburgers are made fresh, so they're always hot and juicy, so you can eat great even late. You must be the new guy. Yeah. Thanks. Wendy's, it's better here. Do you go to extreme measures to measure space? Introducing the new straight line laser tape. Just aim, shoot, and measure. And you'll instantly know the size of any job. Laser tape, part of the straight line laser tool family. Rockstar Games presents Grand Theft Auto Vice City. PlayStation 2 and Xbox as part of the double pack with Grand Theft Auto 3. Rated M for Mature. All St. Joseph's here in the second half, Dick. And as you predicted, coming out of the break, all Jameer Nelson. You must be looking for something for me to buy after the game for you, trying to stroke me here. But there is right now the kick out. I'm going to tell you, West and Carroll making threes, Dan. Certainly is big, but it's all been created by the unbelievable penetration ability of West. Carroll's got that stroke. He gets any open look, it's going down. These three backcourt guys play beautifully together. Carroll, Nelson, and West. And don't count out the Zags, though. This game is far from over. They're not going to back down from anything. They're going to get Step going. they got to get him to make some shots, man. Bankhead and Mallon have come back into the game in Alpha Gonzaga. Step, a nice look inside. And Morrison again showing that mid-range game. Little eight-foot floater. I'll tell you, that type of dandy can flat-out play. I love him. I love him. He steps on the floor. Good things happen. Got to get into the zone. Ten. I think this is a tough club to zone. Ten points for Morrison. If you missed the story in the first half, he is diabetic. And we saw him in the first half as the Zags come up with a rebound. Have to check his blood sugar level and then give himself an injection during a timeout on the bench. Something that he goes through on a daily basis. Violet turns it over. Here's Delonte West. He's got Nelson. West with a pull up from 17. Not there. Offensive rebound. Put back in a foul. What a great offensive rebound. Really attacking the glass. This is more than a, just a Jameer and Elsa basketball team. St. Joe's got some great support players as well. John Bryant getting the bucket. He's got six tonight, and he'll go to the line. You know, John Bryant won the battle with a four slot. With Dave Mallon, who subsequent to that suffered a stress fracture, and he's out three to six weeks. So Bryant and Jones are very important. There's no 
experienced guy to play as a backup in the front court for Phil Martelli. Three raw freshmen behind Brian and Jones. So these guys are going to get a ton of minutes. The kids love that, man. Kids love minutes. Boy, his steps seeing some pressure when he tries to bring the ball up. That'll be a frustrating game for him tonight. Nice look, though, inside. Violet follows his own miss. There's Violet on the interior. It's a good look by Step. Excellent passer. Barley back into the game for St. Joe's. Great defender. Also hit a couple of outside shots in the first half. So they're going with the three small guards and then the two big guys into Brian to Jones. He's trying to match up on the outside. Trying to find the shooters. Nelson right by Bankhead, kicks it to West. West baseline, got up in the air, and then commits the foul. You know, watching this kid play tonight, Nelson, I don't care about size. You look at Boykins right now in the NBA. Shamir Nelson can play in the NBA. I don't think there's any doubt about it. This kid has the toughness and most of all play ball handling skills and shooting ability. It was Gonzaga by four at halftime, but St. Joseph's, led by Jameer Nelson, has dominated the second half. Okay, one thing, Brady Bass and Ross, the fine assistants for Phil Martelli, have done a great job also working with these guys. Offensive foul. Good call there on Bankhead. I he got the, the left ball. arm out there. No doubt about it. Marley does a terrific job defensively. Beats him to the spot. That's called DBT. You understand what I mean? DBT. Or DBT. You drive them, you beat them, and you turn them. <laughs> you drive them to a spot, you beat them, and you turn them. Well, again, the superior quickness of St. Joseph's making it very difficult for the Zags to get the ball up. Shamir Nelson, are you kidding me? Are you serious how good this kid is? I may revamp my first team All-American team. Mallon for three to get the lead down to seven. What did you just say? He's a diaper dandy <laughs> too. Hey, preseason All-American is one thing. Yeah. It's postseason All-American that counts. Yeah. Jameer Nelson on Dick's second All-American team. Chris Thomas, the outstanding point guard at Notre Dame, is his first team All-American point guard. Look at Nelson again. Oh, what a look inside. And he got it back. He's got the ball on a string right now. Look at the wow. spin. Wow. Wow. Oh. Oh, is he a pleasure to watch? Barley. Oh, is he going to be a sight to see? Get your tickets early. Hey, everybody, get your tickets early in Philadelphia. Line up to see the Jameer Nelson show. And it will not be a circus. It will be basketball at its best level. He is for real. I'm sorry, Chris Thomas. I may change my All-American team. <laughs> Oh, you're going to have to be good, Mr. Thomas, to be better than Mr. Nelson. Unbelievable. How does he know there's a guy there? I mean, he's surprising teammates with his passes, and they're right on the money. You know, I have not seen him in person. It's the first time. I'm telling you, why couldn't my bosses send me to Philadelphia to see this kid? <laughs> wow, is he worth the price of admission? Well, here's what you got to do next year. You got to talk to Dan Steer. You got to talk to Burke Magnus, and you say you want Gonzaga to play St. Joe's again, and you want to do the game. I know. Deal? I don't know if I have that kind of power. Ravio inside tonight, 57-49. Ravio and Knight and Morrison are going to be great assets. And trust me, when his club starts to practice together and has their entire club, Mark Few and his kid are going to have a dynamite year. Three or four players playing, but not 100% for Gonzaga tonight. Only down eight. Carroll. And the rebound for Violet. St. John's even with that miss. 10 for 18 from three-point range. I like the toughness you can see in the play of this kid with the ball. Ravio. Foul's going to go on Barley of St. Joseph's. And Ravio's only about 155 pounds. He looks like a kid out there. I know Step can't get any looks whatsoever at the goal. I mean, here's a guy that's been an incredible player. The MVP of their conference, a Wooden, John Wooden Award nominee. All conference two years. Honorable mention All-American in 2003. Nelson and getting a huge ovation, Dick, as he goes to the bench. He was a quarterback in high school when you talk about Blake Step. Ravio turns it over and a tie-up. The arrow will keep it with the Zags. Now we're going to step aside. A bit of a breather for us and a bit of a breather for Jameer Nelson. You know he's going to be back before too long. What a night he has had. And the Hawks are up by eight.
Morning, Joe. New haircut? No. New shoes? No. Hey, Joe. You been working out? Uh, no. Hey, Joe. Shave your mustache? No. Nope. You sure that's not a new haircut? Yes. Did you just get back from vacation? No. Did you get a promotion? No. Did I? No. What's different? He finally asked his doctor about Viagra. Ready to ask your doctor about Viagra for the first time? Find out if a free sample is right for you. To learn more, visit Viagra.com. Ask your doctor yeah. and see the difference. <laughs> Home is where the hoop is. With ESPN Full Court, you'll get more than 450 additional games of college basketball. To order, call your local cable company, Direct TV at 1-800-DIRECT-TV, or Dish Network at 1-800-33. I'm Tim Lake. Tonight at 11. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't do anything. Two Philly cops admit to a sex crime. Tonight, their angry victim talks only to NBC10. Then, a brazen diamond scam caught on tape, and only NBC10 can show you the video. An $11 vacation? NBC10 found dozens of amazing travel deals, and we'll show you how to get yours. And is this windy weather finally over? We'll find out from Earthwatch all tonight on NBC10 News at 11. That family heirloom just conjured up your worst bout of back pain yet. Should you crawl in bed and use all your sick days? Or visit that psychic healer your cousin told you about? Actually, you should talk to Blues On Call from Highmark Blue Shield, where you'll learn all the treatment options to help share in the decision with your doctor. And now, even if you're not a Highmark member, you can use Blues On Call through November 2003. It's the kind of high contact that helps you have a greater hand in your health. Now, Jameer Nelson, with the help of his teammates, has just taken over the second half. The Hawks are up 8 with 11.55 to play. The most excited person in the building, I would think, is Jameer's mom, Linda Billings, who has come from Chester, Pennsylvania, Jameer's hometown, to cheer on her son tonight. Here's Doris Burke. Well, St. Joe's coach Phil Martelli calls Jameer the Pied Piper of Chester, Pennsylvania. Chester on the outskirts of Philadelphia. There is Linda Billingsley arriving today. And Jameer goes back to visit several times a year. He talks to his old high school team. He has become such a part of the fabric of Chester that they actually had to have two buses to accommodate the family and friends that accompanied him to Madison Square Garden tonight, Dan. Well, great to see, Doris, that two busloads of people from Chester and thousands of folks from Philadelphia, St. Joe's fans, have come down to this game. Mallet cleaning up the mess there to bring the Zags back within six. He's going to be a, an asset to their club on the inside as well. That's one of the advantages of playing and staying near home. Playing around there, your people still follow you. They yep. Don't forget who you are. So many kids don't understand that when making a choice in terms of going to school. Violet gets a rebound in heavy traffic, and here comes Blake Stepp. They've done a great job defending Stepp. Trying to go by Lee, knocked away, turnover. St. Joseph's has it. Now Lee almost gives it right back. Dwayne Lee getting a little bit of time, a sophomore from Jersey City. Not going to get a lot of minutes with Mr. Nelson on the court. But I'll tell you one thing, he's going to improve in practice going head-to-head -head with him. Barley and Lee and Stachitis all out of the floor at the same time, well, along with Carol and Jones. Well, right now, you've got to make a little run if you're Gonzaga. Yeah. You've got to take advantage of this. Yeah, a lot of the regulars are on the bench right now for the Hawks, but Nelson's getting ready to check back in, and so is West. You've got to shut him down here. You've got to contain him in this possession. Can't let them score here. Here's Lee. Jones with a slam. That really hurts. They score in that possession. They got the people resting, and now they go up by eight. Tell you, one guy's probably liking this, maybe watching it back at home, is our own Digger Phelps' son-in-law, Jamie Moyer, who went to St. Joe's. Now he lives up in Seattle because, of course, he plays for the Mariners, but probably still a Hawks fan. And Jamie Moyer, one of the good guys in baseball, the Roberto Clemente Award winner this year. One of the great guys in baseball, and what a winner he's been. He's been one of the best left-handers in the game. Yep. Maybe the best left-hander in the game because he knows the art of pitching. And I'll tell you one thing, he married a beautiful young lady in Karen. they got a great family. And I'll tell you, with the cash he's making, he's probably going to donate millions right down there to St. Joe's. I'm sorry, <laughs> he, Jamie. He, he doesn't make <laughs> as much as Digger makes. No, I know. 
Jones picks up the foul, his third. Step to the line. And look at what a tough night it's been for Blake Step. Pounded every single time he gets the basketball. And now here comes Nelson back into the game. Step to West Coast Conference Player of the Year. Excellent free throw shooter, just a tough athlete, played for his dad in high school. One of two from the line, rebound Delonte West. Look at the confidence right now this guy's got. Can he play in the NBA? I believe he can start right now for the New York Knickerbockers. I don't think their point guards are any better than Jameer Nelson. And a stoppage with some debris on the floor. Sunday, four of the top nine of women's college basketball teams in the land to meet in the State Farm Tip-Off Classic on ESPN2. First, it's number three, Texas, against number two, Duke at 2.30. Then number five, Kansas State, battling Purdue at 5 o'clock. The State Farm Tip-Off Classic on ESPN2. Are you kidding? Look at that drive right there. Look at that little drive on that baseline. He can go right, he can go left. He can shoot the long distance ATT jump shot. 16 now for Jameer Nelson. Knight at the other end, the miss. West with a rebound. A breakout now for St. John's. West spins and it's blocked by Knight. They are gonna be so much fun to watch. Now watch this play right here. Look at the spin. Beautiful spin along the baseline. Uses the left hand. Lays it on the glass. You know, when Phil Martelli was talking about Nelson being the best college basketball player in the country, he paused, and then he said, if he's not the best player in the country, he's certainly the most valuable. He said, you take Nelson off our team, we don't get invited to this tournament. And he's well, right about that. Well, he is right about that. You know, he sees the kid every day. But obviously, you know, he's a little biased. Sure. You talk to people across America that have great, great players, they're going to think that their kid is the yep. best. Yeah. In out of Connecticut, they love Mr. Oakland. How about Delonte West? He's holding up his end of the bargain tonight. He's not going to back down from any. Anyone. He's a poised scorer. He's got a scorer's mentality. As you mentioned in the first half, he scored an average of 27 points per game over six games until he suffered a stress fracture in his leg last year that he tried to play through the rest of the way, but it wasn't the same. But he is a terrific scorer and was the most improved player in the A-10 last year. I look at him right here. He's going to use the screen. Freeze it right here. See him use that screen? He's going to use that screen right now. And he's going to beat the defender with a little one-on-one. -on -one. It takes it right to the goal with the left hand and converts. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be tough to find a better backcourt yep. working together the way those two kids are in sync. And you add in Carroll on the wing shooting jumpers. Barley off the bench playing defense. I mean, they've got a great backcourt. Well, so did they really have a great one down at Duke as well. Yes, way. yep. Ravio passed up a shot. Gets it back from Morrison. Plenty of time to shoot it. Nice face. Step. Gets About one time. to go down. About time. They needed that for Blake Step. That's a big one for him. This club's not going away. They're only down eight. They need a couple of stops. Remember that Gonzaga won on a last-second shot just about on St. Joseph's floor two years ago. West again, St. Joe's. Went out and won in overtime on Gonzaga's floor last year. You know, Nelson's so tough. It leaves the coach on the sideline. You're wondering what to do. If you play man-to-man, -man, Nelson can beat you off the dribble. You go to the zone, they shoot over the top of the zone. They create problems. Either, either way you go. So Martelli's got to be a happy guy. Nelson with 16. West with 16. The backcourt for the Hawks. Lighting up the Zags right now here in New York City. 66-55, St. Joe's. A 15-point turnaround here in the second half, thanks to Nelson and West. The volcano is a sleeping giant. Anytime he can stir. Even when it's quiet, a volcano has a lot to say about our planet. My job is to listen to the volcano. TIAA Craft manages money for Dr. Harold or Secrets. Volcanoes, that's what I think about. TIAA Craft, managing money for people with other things to think about.
matter where you are, with Verizon wireless phones from Radio Shack, you can take and send pictures instantly. Not that I'm going Hollywood or anything. So come to Radio Shack, your wireless phone headquarters. Isn't that bad? Now get a $50 Radio Shack mail-in rebate with two-year annual agreement when you buy and activate the new LG VX6000 with built-in digital camera. Send pictures to other phones and any email address. Radio Shack. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball. Brought to you by It's Back with more digital music than anyone. Napster.com. St. Joe's up 11 here at Madison Square Garden. What a second half for the Hawks. Doris Burke was near the Gonzaga huddle. Doris, what's going on over there? Mark Few told his players, listen, this game is right there for us. We cannot take quick shots. We cannot try to force the action, take it possession by possession. He said defensively on the drive to the rim, he said, where is our help? He said, we can't survive against these guards with good help. We've got to have great help tonight from our post players. Well, what he's talking about, Doris, what really makes it very difficult, if you give any kind of help at all on a penetration ability or Nelson, guys are going to be wide open on the side. It's almost very difficult to give help in this situation because the bottom line is once you give help, open guys are right there on the wings to shoot it. Guys like West and Callum. Let's see how much of the shot clock the Zags use this time down the floor. Ravio with good speed, and the follow is there for Violet. Violet hanging around the basket. Ravio gets to the glass. And Violet finishes it off with that conversion. Dick Violet's got 14 rebounds in this game. But the Zags are still down nine. Look at St. Joseph shooting here in the second half. Nice look. West to Barley. Good rebound by Steph. Nice look to Skinner. No call. The follow, yes, and the Zags are getting back into it. They're going to make a little run right now. You look at the Zags as a timeout by Phil Martelli, an excellent timeout. The Zags are going to have a great year. I mean, you got to remember this now. Rony Turioff, who's out right now, is not your normal player. I mean, this is a pro potential player, and a guy's been out with a foot injury. Bottom line is they've had a lot of guys injured. They have not had the rhythm and timing, and they're playing an outstanding team tonight. Tomorrow night, ESPN and ESPN2 have a couple of great college football games for you, beginning at ESPN2 at 7 o'clock. Heisman hopeful Larry Fitzgerald and the Pitt Panthers look to remain undefeated in Big East play as they take on West Virginia in the backyard for all men. Number three, LSU against Alabama, 745 Eastern over on ESPN. A recap of game one, Carl Krauser of Pittsburgh had a huge second half in Pitt's 71 to 62 win over a game but very inexperienced Alabama team. Yeah, Alabama really gave him a great effort, but it was Krauser in the second half. was brilliant. One for eight in the first half, but ended up with 19. And did a brilliant job in leading Mr. Jamie right to his first win. Jamie oh, Dixon. God. Jamie yeah. gets his it's first win. First ever feeling. game as a head coach. I saw him around here. I think he came back to watch this second <laughs> oh, Jamie game. Dixon was walking around. Yeah. He's on cloud nine. He's yeah. got his first W. It won't be his last, that's for sure. Now let's see what comes out of this timeout. A couple of quick buckets for the Zags, getting them back within seven of St. Joseph's. I got a kick watching the Zags assistant coaches going wild. Bill Greer, Leon Rice, and Tommy Lloyd. They're right into it big time. Man-to-man -man defense out of the zone. Nelson. Good rebound. That was Barley at about 6-2 getting up there and bringing it down, and they'll reset. I tell you, Barley's really played well off the bench. He's been a positive force for them off the bench. And as he goes by Ravio, Ravio commits the foul, his first. Just the fourth team foul on the Zags. You know, St. Joe's playing with a lot of ball handlers right now. You can really say they got four guards on the floor. Well, Bill Martelli decided instead of worrying about a Gonzaga size too much, he would go small and quick and try to make Gonzaga worry about his team's quickness. And the one big guy they got is a human eraser, <laughs> is he Jones. Jones. Brian's had some good moments as well when he's been in there. Tough to match up right now with these little guards. Yeah, right now, Pat Carroll is the second biggest guy on the floor for the Hawks, and he's really about a 6'4 wingman. Look how quick he is with the ball. I mean, he's got every little move with the ball in his hands. He, and he makes that rock talk, man. He makes that rock talk. 
that sequence earlier this half where he had the ball in a string, lost it, got it back, another pass, the spin move. I mean, that was something else. He's very strong physical, too. Yeah. In his body. Well, let's go to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, guys, the last time Phil Martelli and St. Joe's had this kind of expectations on them coming into the season, they did not fare very well. Remember 2001 when they took Stanford in the NCAA tournament right down to the wire? They returned four starters, including Bill Phillips, Marvin O'Connor, Naeem Crenshaw. They lost their opening game, had some injuries, and really fell flat on their face. Went to the NIT, but it was a real disappointing season. I asked Phil, did it change him as a coach? Has it helped him with the expectations this year? He said, you know what? We really didn't know how to act that year. Year, how to operate with the weight of expectations. What I've told our guys is we've got great leadership with Jameer Nelson and Tyrone Barley. He said we're just going to try to get better at one thing every single day. We want to go on a very steep incline and not decline during the season. They're off to a great start, no question. Ooh, they go on an incline right now. There's no decline, I can tell you that. Stock up. <laughs> West trying to find somebody underneath, but he turns it over, and the Zags can inch a little bit closer. Right now, up on the ball inside the violin. So he used the screen and a roll to the basket. Roll to the basket, dump it inside. Step. And somebody got a piece of that ball, and it is out of bounds back over to St. Joe's. Well, the Hawks try to deal a defeat to Gonzaga here in the final game of the Coaches versus Cancer Classic for Madison Square Garden in New York City in front of a big pro St. Joseph's crowd. Thousands of people coming up from Philadelphia. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN2 at the conclusion of this game. And those people haven't been disappointed as of yet, that's for sure. 5.40 on the clock, up 7. Big possession right now. The lob is good, and Violet wanted a foul as well, didn't get it. But even without that, the Zags are back within five. Be careful, you don't get a technical. You're They're right. A foul, you get a tee. He got stared down by Mr. Hess. A 6-0 run now for Gonzaga. And now the St. Joe's fans starting to make a little bit more noise. They're a little bit worried about this lead right now. I got to put the ball in Nelson's hands, clear out, get him a little one-on-one. -on -one. Again, a small lineup for St. Joseph's. Three guards and Carroll, a wing guy, and then one big guy in Jones. See, right now, he's got to take them one on one. Shot clock running down. Nelson the fadeaway again. Rebound, Jones. That's a big time rebound. If he could do it again, he'd probably kick the ball out to a guard, though. Gonzaga coming back. They're on a 6 0 run right now to get back within five. And you can see the experience right now. When you look at Gonzaga, they have experience not folding. You can just see the makeup of their team. Look at their roster. Look at the pe people they've beaten in the past. And notice this club can play. Step. Rebound, Hawks. He's having one of his toughest nights yeah. probably in his college days. And again, he's had to work hard from the moment this game began. Whether it was West or Nelson or Barley guarding him, none of them have given him an inch. We're down to winning time right now. You go to the last four minutes, Dan. This is where shot selection, we talk about making free throws. All are vital to lead you to that winner's circle. West nice finds score, Nelson top. on the cut. Jones with a rebound, and he falls out of bounds over Nelson and turns it over to the Zags. What a great backdoor cut, but they don't convert. Mark View in that timeout, Doris Burke talked about when they were down 11, he said, hey, possession by possession, we're still in this game. And he was right. Positive thinking, always looking at the glass, half filled, rather than half empty. Four minutes to go, Gonzaga with the ball, down only five. online only on PlayStation 2. College Hill. Hey, College Hill. Record breaker. Back to zero. It's courts to be run. There are games to be won. College Hill, you just begun. 
introducing the icon loaded weapon and the freshman class of the first school only at champ sports i'm wanted in four states but it's all good got me new driver's license and a sweet new pickup v8 baby 500 horsepower oh and for them mud flaps with the naked ladies on them and the best part is it's all free yeah well for me at least <laughs> Introducing City Identity Theft Solutions, free with any city card. Help getting your life back? That's using your card wisely. Hmm, they're saying running back by committee is bad for football. I was just saying I see the relevance of committees, just not for running backs. <laughs> Dan Patrick just used the word unitard in his column. I was just saying unitard is one of the most underutilized words in the English language. Wait, if I was thinking that, then they were thinking. As we come back inside of Madison Square Garden and look at one of the big plays for the Zags as they try to mount a comeback. Step to Violet, a low percentage play maybe, but it pays off for the Zags as St. Joseph's lead is down to five. It's a 6-0 run for Gonzaga. We talked about at the beginning of the game how Gonzaga's advantage probably would be their big guys and St. Joseph's strength is their backcourt, their perimeter game, and that has truly been the case. Look at the numbers on Nelson and West here tonight. Well, you expect that. I think Mark Few talked about that also with Doris at halftime. He said, hey, we expect our guards are going to score. They put most of their shots up. They're their offensive. The offense goes through them. And there's no doubt about that. Morris in the back end of the game and now for Gonzaga. Along with Step, Skinner, Violet, and Mallon. Again, it's the small lineup. For St. Joe's, the three small guards, Carroll on the wing, and Jones, the big guy, and it is out of bounds, but will stay at this end of the floor. You know, Violet had that open lane, looked like he was going in for that conversion. You know, people talk about seeding when you look at Gonzaga, that they don't get a real great seed. Bottom line is, when you get opportunities to play these kind of teams, like St. Joe's, you have to win. Skinner misses the three, Nelson with yet another rebound. Hey, he rebounds for a little guy, doesn't he? West. And the rebound, Step. Nice pass by Step. Morrison. Did he walk? Yes, he did. Yeah, good call right there. No doubt the walking violation. Carl Hess with the excellent call. Reggie Cofer doing an outstanding job of Mr. Hess. Yeah. No doubt about it. Still a five-point game. St. Joe's with the lead and the ball. Just over three minutes to go. Oh, oh did he call that baby? Did he call that baby off the glass? That's a killer. That really hurts. Pat Carroll with a three off glass, and the lead is eight. And now it's... Barley's got it. He's got four teammates with him, but he didn't know it. It was a five-on-one. West to the bench as they turn it over. One more look at the last time down the floor. Carroll banking home a three. Hey, the bank must be open, baby. There it is. There's no way he planned that, I can tell you yeah. that. But he's going to take it. Oh, yeah. Give him credit. He didn't smirk or anything on his way back down the floor. They've been struggling also offensively, and that was a big three. They needed that, baby. Could have had another two this last time down at a five on one, but Barley didn't know it. And now we've got a push going to go on Nelson, and that will be the fourth foul on Jameer Nelson. He's going to leave him on the floor, certainly with 228 on the clock. And into the bonus now go the Zags as Tony Skinner, the senior from Albuquerque, goes to the line. Still plenty of time for Gonzaga to make a run. I mean, it's amazing when you think about the four-year record of Mark Few. 49-7 and seven in conference play, 105-29, and 29, four straight championships in conference play, four straight NCAA appearances, average 26 wins per season, 46-3 and three at home. I mean, it's incredible when you think about it. They rank in the last four years number six in terms of wins. Duke number one with 118, 
Kansas 108, Oklahoma 107, Arizona 106, Tulsa 106, Gonzaga 105, wow. and number seven, the Terps of Maryland 103. You know, Mark Few has said that he would only consider leaving Gonzaga if he got a job coaching at a place where he felt he had a really good chance to win a national championship. He now feels he's got a really good chance at Gonzaga because of the caliber of players that they're able to recruit. And they're getting that new facility next year. So they're going to create a lot of enthusiasm and excitement. He's starting to get commitments out of the best players out of the West there. But they're in danger of dropping their season opener. St. Joe's with a six-point lead, just over two minutes to play. And on the Nelson drive, a foul by Knight. And Nelson's not happy, feeling that Knight went after him a little bit too hard. He's got to play right now. Knight got up on him, playing him tough defensively. And he's going to have to expect that. And Phil Martelli just waved at him and said, no, 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 pointed to his temple, saying, don't do that. Don't get involved in any of that stuff. Oh, you got to have that good basketball. I went over, shook hands. He's too good a player. So the ball out of bounds, off night, and it will be St. Joseph's ball. Staring at the size of night and the quickness of night now, trying to check him. If he gets any kind of screen. <laughs> It was a foul on I checked that, but just the sixth team foul on the Zag. So a fresh 35 for St. Joseph's here as they can milk the clock a little bit more. They spread the court really well. Excellent spacing, well coached. They got some outstanding coaches in the city of Philadelphia. Starts with the Hall of Famer, John Cheney. Take a friend, Duffy, Jay Wright. Nelson, a desperation shot, got rim with the rebound to the Zags. Bad shot. This is a big possession right here, Dan. This is a major possession. Timeout, Gonzaga. Good timeout. They're going to make this win happen right here. They need a conversion. Sports Center coming up after the conclusion of this game right here on ESPN2. And look at some of the stories. The Sixers answer the chance. Boomer on the battle of the Bills. And is the Major League Baseball steroid policy tough enough? That's next on Sports Center. Well, again, the uh, the difference in this game, especially here in the second half, Dick, as you talked about, the outstanding play of the St. Joseph's backcourt, one of the best backcourts in the country. Well, there's no doubt it's one of the premier backcourts, and it starts with the little guy, Jameer Nelson, his penetration ability, his ability to innovate, but it's more than Mr. Nelson. Mr. West's partner can play as well. He has great scoring ability, Dante West. And we're going to watch him right now with a little reverse layup. In the end, Mr. Towles jump shot as well. You talk about tandems. There aren't many tandems in the nation. You know, you look at, than that. at Nelson 16, West with 16, Carroll with 12, and Barley, a guard, off the bench with 12. And those four players have 56 points for St. Joseph's tonight. 56 of the 69 points that they have. Shouldn't shock you, though. When you really prepare for them and you talk to people, everybody just raves about their backcourt. And deservedly so. Phil Martelli getting them pumped up for the last minute and 21 seconds. Gonzaga down to one timeout after this one. They're going to look a three right now if they can get a good look. Certainly if it's available. If it's not, you take the high percentage deuce. But if that three is available, people want to know who I was responding to there. I was responding to my partner, Mr. Schumann. I was responding to my producer in my ear, <laughs> Mr. Steer. He's your me. questions and you're answering on the air. And let me tell you, for eight teams to prepare in two nights, our producer and our director have done a phenomenal job. Yep. Mr. Steer and Mr. Holmes, A-plus, my friends, for your preparation. I second that. Step turns it over. Big turnover, a big turnover. You don't expect to see that on the All-American candidate. Down six with a minute and plus to go on the clock. You can't turn it over in that sequence. Fine Chancellor of Gonzaga's here. Had a chance to speak to him. He's wearing his Zag shirt, cheering. Spreading the court. Very tough to play him in a spread back court. Oh, turn over there. Gonzaga gets it back. Step back. Nice Gonzaga's going to run it down, but they missed an opportunity for an easy two points. 40 seconds to go. Plus, it takes time off the clock, and a little walking violation. Look at Phil Martelli doing a little dance. I'll let Louis Cornacek when he used to be on that sideline. 
Oh, do I miss the little fella? The corner suckers of the world, the Maguires, the Balbanos, the Massimino's. Where have you all gone? All the guys with character. Timeout, St. Joseph's. Well, you got to love Martelli's character. He's got as much oh. personality as any coach going right now, don't you think? I really love him. I love him on that sideline. He's genuine, man. He's got passion. He's got feeling. You got to like that. Uh, Hawk Hill is going to be celebrating tonight. You know what? And it's, it's the caliber of this team, but also the way that Phil Martelli has built the program and the way that he has connected with the student body at St. Joseph's. One of the big reasons why there are thousands and thousands of people here from Philadelphia who have driven up and set a coaches versus cancel record for purchasing the most tickets from one school in this tournament. Well, as we said earlier, to put it in perspective, St. John's, the local school, gets 600 tickets. They return 120. They get their tickets. They want more. They sell over 4,000 from Philadelphia. Apathy. It's apathy right now for the St. John's program. And I feel for kids out there, the kids that play, all those kids that gave everything. They played their heart out last night. They may not have made shots, but Ingram and Hill and Mr. Jarvis and his kids played their heart out. But the people did not support them. And it's opening game. And I say shame on you to those fans. All of the games competitive here in this event with Wake Forest beating Memphis by nine. Marquette over St. John's by seven last night. Tonight, Pittsburgh over Alabama by nine. And right now, St. Joe's leading Gonzaga by six. Boy, they do a nice job getting it over. All those ball handlers on the floor. They spread the court really well. It's going to mean the free throw line now. Convert on a free throw line, you go home, a happy group. You miss, you make it a little bit more interesting. I can't say the coach will lose any more hair. He's got no hair to lose. <laughs> and a long way to come for the Zags. The first ever appearance in this building for the Gonzaga basketball program looks like it's going to end in defeat. Well, my friends, another season is upon us. Officially, the season is here in college hoops with the completion of the coaches versus cancer. The question, will we have another surprise? Will there be another Syracuse who wasn't rated by all the coaches and experts? In fact, they didn't get rated until February, and they went on the march to win the national title. The beauty of the NCAA, the best sporting event of them all, March Madness. Nothing is better. It is awesome, baby, with a capital A. <laughs> Skinner, three not there. Each of the last two years, the eventual national champion has lost a game here in this tournament. Maryland two years ago, Syracuse last year. Maybe that's a little bit of consolation for Gonzaga right now. I don't think so. It's St. Joe's having all the fun. Well, St. Joe's is having all the fun, but Gonzaga is the kind of team, when you talk about losing this early, who can regroup and get themselves back quickly. Because remember, and I'm not taking anything away from St. Joe's, but even Phil Martelli would be the first to tell you, without Roni Torrey off in the middle and without a healthy club, this is a different, different Gonzaga team. And Gonzaga still has out-of-conference games against Georgia, Maryland, Missouri. Missouri, Stanford, and Tulsa, among others. Don't forget the preseason NIT begins next week as Violet buries about a 38-footer. You know, St. Joe's is going to play in that Pete Newell Classic as yeah. well with Cal. That's an outstanding classic out there. Jeff Cullinger and his guys do a great job with it. How about that? Think Jameer Nelson is happy he came back for one more year of college right now. 20 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds, leading the Hawks over the Zags, 73 to 66. Once again, the final here, St. Joe's by 7 over Gonzaga. Sports Center is next here on ESPN2. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and our entire ESPN crew, thanks for watching. Sports Center.